Okay. So I guess like get, getting into the GMS of it all, um, like the last time we talked was, you know, towards the end of February. Um, and the last time I yeah. really heard any, anything out of you was when you released <laughs> your podcast on March 8th saying, you know, I quit today <laughs> and be talking about yeah. uh, th- that whole episode for yourself. Um, so, it, so it's seven months later, like what have the last seven months been like for, for Ty Dillon? Yeah, I just wanted to have a like a real conversation that podcast and, and you know, I still hope to this day that that podcast isn't received as I quit. You know, I actually quit on the day. It was more about a conversation of like some days you wake up and you have a hard time and it's OK to have a hard time. It was more of a mental health discussion and, um, you know, the importance of having good people surrounding you. And um, it was, it's more gratitude towards my family and my wife. and. Um, and my faith about, you know, sometimes you want to give up. And, you know, I felt that way a couple of days previous of, of, um, of making the podcast of, man, I just, you know what, I don't want to have to keep going through the stress of worry about providing for my family and this job. And is it going to work out? Like in that moment, it was hard. And, and, you know, that continued, that was really, it's a tough time. You want, you want to race and you want to, um, you know, you want to be a part of, of a team again, but also the, the pain of like continuing to hear no's and situations not working out. You know, you just, it's easy to just say, you know what, whatever, I give up, I'll go, you know, find a different job in a different direction. And maybe this isn't made for me. And, um, you know, I, I kept going, kept fighting, kept making phone calls, kept getting opportunities, um, you know believing that it was you know if it was meant to be it was going to work out and, um, you know uh, I'm so grateful the the connection was made with with GMS Mike Beam Maury Gallagher and it just uh, it started coming together uh, in, in such a organic good way and uh, you know I'm, I'm so thankful to have this opportunity and feel so good for it uh, I'm grateful for the work put in and, but I also know that you know things things happen for a reason so uh it's a it's been a wild year in a sense and I wouldn't say I'd want to do it again but I do think it was necessary for me to go through that I feel like I've grown and matured it's put things in a in a different viewpoint of perspective of why I love racing and why I want to be a part of racing I think in the past a lot of my motivation was based off of uh, fear of failure and fear of not impressing people uh, with my skill Um, now my motivation is just pure love of the sport, pure love of, of waking up every day and working on being just a little bit better, no matter the results, but, but, you know, pushing myself and growing in a team and growing relationships, enjoying the ride of actually enjoying the ride of a career that is so, so fun and so cool and trying not to be jaded and just worrying about, you know, the perception of me of, am I finishing good or, and things like that. And I think that having more of a pure motivation like that is just, uh, it's, uh, it's easier to get up and, and work hard every single day when you, when you see it in that, that light. So I'm grateful for, for the hard times because it definitely, uh, you know, makes you, makes you stronger. Like, so you, I mean, you mentioned that, that the podcast you did is part of like a mental health discussion and athlete mental health has been in the conversation a lot this year. Uh, with like Simone Biles at the Olympics, um, that the the one tennis player I can't I can't think of her name right now off the top uh, of my head. Naomi, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. So, uh, so what what has it been like for you seeing high profile athletes like that go through their struggles? Um, I just think it's I think it's refreshing. Um, and as an athlete, I think there is is pressures that people might not understand why you would want to take a break from doing something that is so fun. And I think that is hard for people to understand. And I totally get that. Right. Um, Some people work a nine job uh, and look forward to going out and playing, you know, a sport as a hobby or, you know, that was a great pastime as a kid, but um, anything professional at the highest level is stressful and demanding on your life. Um, 
and anybody who's typically made it to a high level has sacrificed a lot of time in their life to be the very best. Um, it just isn't easy. Um, and when things go from being a fun hobby uh, to a job, everything changes. Uh, and I think being able, athletes being able to have the platform, I just think everything changes. Um, you know, the demands, uh, you have so many more people uh, pulling you in different directions. It's a job, right? It is a, yeah. it is a fun thing that you do but it is a very serious job. It's your livelihood and there's a lot of pressure and you have a lot of fans. There's a lot of responsibility and don't get me wrong. Like being a professional athlete is one of the greatest jobs to have, but it doesn't, it doesn't, um, I guess, denounce the fact that it's hard uh, emotionally and mentally uh, and physically when you're, when you're exerting that much that often, it can't, it has to affect you mentally um, unless you, spend all your time recovering your body and your mind then you have no time for relationships in life and it, and it just makes things really tough so there's a massive balance i think for athletes and um i think part of the mental health discussion is healing within itself um, athletes feeling comfortable to say hey like i'm not i need a i need a second to kind of gather my mind because i loved this sport and i think that's kind of what i'm saying like as a kid, I was motivated by, you know, motivated by the pressure of performance and motivated by the pressure of uh, pleasing other people. And then as you grow and mature, that motivation is more toxic than it is helpful as your career goes on. And I think it is helpful for athletes to take a step back and realize what they love about the sport. And I think that's kind of the mental health grow, growing area where, um, where I think fans might get it, you know, it might be hard to understand sometimes, but you really have to put sport in, in a good place in your heart to where it's enjoyable again, even though it's a professional level sometimes, uh, because typically if you're a professional athlete, you started when you were a child and yeah. it was all fun, uh, uh, but you've sacrificed a lot of time. Then all of a sudden you're, you're grown and you're in this, this world of sports, whether you've had success or not. Um, and the pressures and demands on your life are so different. And all you really want to do is just, you know, enjoy the ride and enjoy your friends and your family and the fun of it again. Um, but you're constantly pulled to do media and different things. And I think um, as you grow, you just have to find that place in your heart and that place in your mind of, uh, you know, a pure joy of what you do. And I think it's always like the mental health discussion is so it, it's a great thing that it's happening across sports because um, you see so many athletes struggle with different things and, and whether their career ends or they're, they're in the middle of their career um, I think it's a it's a it's a very important uh, discussion it's hard to describe from outside of an athlete's uh, mm -hmm. point I think you know when you've you've lived this adrenaline and high of expectation and fandom and um, that comes with being a professional athlete and then when you realize that, you know, there's more, you know, you have a lot of life to live after sport and you've been so used to this one thing that drove you. I just think that it's a really important discussion to have. And when, when athletes kind of take a stand for something, I remember in NASCAR, it was Dale Jr. sitting out for the first concussion. Um, that was a massive moment in the sport now where we have protocols and it's okay. You're not, a, you're not afraid to, to talk about your, um, physical health um, yeah. and, and taking a break for that um, and I think mental health is something that is so important to life in general um, that you know it's more about taking care of humans than it is making sure your favorite athletes uh, be on the court or on the field or on the track every single time that you want to see them um, and, and I think you're only going to get better athletes from allowing a more or open-minded uh, mental health discussion.